God. <laughs> First of all, who's using contraceptive jelly these days? I don't think anybody is. I am. All well, the time. I stand corrected. So there is a... a um, I just stick my dick in that jar and boop. Blueberry. <laughs> It's my favorite it's a, flavor. I guess it's contraceptive because he's not killing right. it. Yeah, <laughs> I think it works. I'm just gonna stop there. Um, <laughs> there is a. The FDA is currently testing a male mm-hmm. birth control, and it is a cream that you apply. And so there's this great meme where it's like guy talking to girl. She's like, "Oh, honey, come in the bed. I'm ready." He's like, "Hold on, let me put on my sunblock." And it's S O N. That is oh. awesome. Oh. If you, that's not the best marketing ploy <laughs> I have ever seen. Oh my god. <sighs> Including apply that sunblock. All right, let's go for the cheers, 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 cheers. 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 Hello and welcome to Strange Happy Hour. Mm. I am one of your hosts, Brent the Jesterhead Metcalf, along to my right. Handsome John, Jumpy. In the middle of his swig. Yep. And on my left, the dispatcher, Mark Plover. You if, always start with him, and then today you went to the right. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like it was planned. It was. Uh, if you have not been here before, don't worry about it. You can just continue listening per your ledger. But if you've been here before, you've visited us and enjoyed our content. In case you were wondering what is going on, we are changing up the flow of our content along with how we're managing it. No longer are we going to do a giant news block up front. We actually have a... Uh, segment uh, down below in the description called The Runner-Ups. Uh, the runners up are actually all the co- um, topics we wanted to talk about today, but really don't have the time to, so there are a bunch of news articles down there. Some of those include um, AC Odyssey, the new community quest tool is actually allowing players to build quests where they can get a bunch of experience without actually playing the game. Uh, there's another one involving Endgame coming back into theaters with deleted content to try and beat Avatar at the box office. Uh, there's more below. That's so selfish. It is your weekly reading list, so go ahead and check them out. There's a lot of cool articles down there. Yeah. That, is, however, is not really what is important this week because we have, amongst ourselves, our three topics that we're going to discuss in detail. We call those the, the important, important That went on for a little longer than I wanted yeah. it to. You were starting, I'm like, <laughs> man, are you are going to wrangle that in. <laughs> He's like, going to be like, hot surprise. Yeah, I'm just going to keep talking in circles until I finally find a way to land this thing. I mean, that's normally what I do. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move over to the dispatcher to talk about the U.S. legislature in our own data. Legislature. 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 Anyway, so there is some new uh, U.S. legislation. I'm going to have to bring up my uh, my notes here. Go to ahead. Bring up the name of this because the acronym is a little long. Of course. Why would the U.S. government make something that's easy to read? As proposed by Mark Warner and Josh Hawley, U.S. senators, they're proposing the designed or designing accounting safeguards to help broaden oversight and regulations on Data Act. <laughs> that's the Dashboard Act. Like, I like the acronym, but are you kidding me? What? Are you kidding me? Why do you have to come up with this ridiculous name? Anyway. Um, that was, was a name? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's that's that whole the, thing was a name. That's yes. the name of the act, yeah. Oh, my God. I thought that was a The quote. acronym is Dashboard. Oh, my God. So. That's insanity. <laughs> <laughs> so, the point of the act, and this is actually a really, really big deal, is that every 90 days it will require companies that explicitly make money off of selling your data Mm -hmm. to issue a report about how much your data is worth individually. So a receipt. Basically. (laughs) More or less. That we just don't see the money from? I mean, so, I mean, realistically, they're doing it now because you, in the terms and conditions, you sign away your data as you enter it, that kind of thing. As you enter more data, you're literally volunteering this information to them with them having the ability to sell it anyway in the terms of service, which, by the way, can change without notification and a bunch of other nonsense. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. blah. Um, Everything you know already, you don't read it. Let's move on. Yeah. Right. So You're it a seems damn fool, like, son. So uh, the, the, it seems like this is more targeted at two specific companies because there are two very large companies that, in particular, make most of their money off of doing this, Facebook and Google. I never would have guessed. Nope. No, never. I was going to say Target and Home Depot. Yep, those are correct. <laughs> um, but it, it, I like this idea because it mm. forces the companies essentially to be held accountable for the information that they do distribute and sell. Because, they, like, if you know how much your data is worth, more or less, you're going to maybe re- restrict what you do give them. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, because if you have some idea about how much they're actually making off of you as an individual, 
just having your data. You know, I mean, because the, the example they give is your relationship status, your uh, gender, and your general age range, not even your specific age or your yeah. birthday. Um, and not even including first name, last name, any of that stuff. Um, just that data could be worth five person, five dollars per person per user. Right, yeah, I'm sorry, per user per month. Yeah. So, like, is it going to be like, oh, you? I have, you know, six points on you, so you're worth six dollars a month, but I only have three points on you, so you're worth three dollars well, a month. But individual data fields could be worth more or less, or certain groupings of data fields could be worth more or less, depending on the type of targeted advertisement that they're trying to go for. Mm-hmm. Do I mean, you the have the ability is, to block them from using this information if you wanted to? No. Okay. Uh, you do by removing it, but the problem is if you've already input the information, technically they can store the archive of it, and that's kind of it. Like, yeah, you're, unfortunately, you're, what you've already done. You can't undo. Undo. Your option right now, for the most part, is to just drop those services. Right. Yeah. But unfortunately, this isn't Europe, where we have, where they have the right to be forgotten. Where if you say delete my data, they legally have to delete your data. Like Google has to remove you as a search result if they type in your name, for example. So if we live in Europe for how long can we do that? It That's won't matter. It won't out. matter because well, in, until. Because if I'm a technically become a resident in Europe, they have to abide by those laws. But, yeah, I mean, I guess it would depend. They might have blockers in there for, hey, he lives a U.S. citizen up to here, so we'll delete it all the way up to while he's a European citizen. Ooh, that'd be dirty. Yeah, so it's, it, it's a little funky there, I guess. I'm sure they're not going to make it clear uh, well, either on how it works. Part no. of it, too, is that they could store the information in the U.S. and make it searchable in the U.S. And then delete it. And then it delete your, it from any yeah. kind of European search results. Yeah. Mm. I mean, you're not a European citizen, so you have no right to be forgotten, technically, even if the search results turned up in Europe, for example. Not that it particularly matters, I guess, being here in the yeah. States. But. My, my big thing that I really like about this is that there is a generation, there, there's a large grouping of individuals out there right now who believe these services are free, and they don't understand what it means when you say selling your data. Depends they don't understand. What you're talking about when you say free. Correct. It's technically free for you. <clears throat> Te- well, it's not free for us because the cost is our data. They're making money off that. The money has to come from somewhere. Right. Everything has a cost to it in order for it to actually be like viable at this large of a scale. And so I think actually putting a price tag on what you're valued by these companies is very important because you can start looking and going, holy cow, I'm actually actively spending roughly – an estimated whatever. Like, I'm not, it's not coming out of my pocket, but that's what right, I'm worth. Right. Yeah. That's where that goes. That's a cost to some degree. Right. I mean, it, you as the individual technically can't sell your own indivi- yeah. in- information individually. The whole reason that Facebook and Google make the, as much money as they aggregate. do off of your information, yeah, is because of the aggregate of data. Yeah. Um, I mean, billions of users or millions of users across the globe is much more valuable than one individual. Correct. Kind of thing. I also think it's great because um, there are a lot of tools out there today that really do help with limiting this kind of thing. So uh, Mozilla owns Firefox. They they have set settings on there so that you don't have to share your data whatsoever. Right. There's DuckDuckGo and mm-hmm. Starline's another one I just heard recently, which is another search engine that basically searches Google as if you were incognito. So it gives you Not a Not incognito proxy. mode, but like the search itself is like completely... Interesting. Wrapped in some some other user setting, so it doesn't count as your browser. Or you your can go yeah. overkill, like I would, you know, and just set up a virtual machine with your own installation, correct? Of, like Opera. Yes, and so <laughs> all, all these things are available sure. to you, but a lot of people don't bother with it because why would you? Well, now you have a reason. Here's the evidence. Here's the data you need. It's funny. Right. I used to use proxies just to avoid people knowing I looked at porn. <laughs> <laughs> I want everybody to see my fetish. Um, uh, so the only piss thing- fetish. Excuse me. Doesn't matter. Move on. <laughs> the Don't only... want to waste it. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing about this act, one, it's going to come across a ton of opposition because the companies don't want to. Of know, course. Don't want people knowing how much they're actually generating of revenue off of this. Mm-hmm. But I don't. Even if it goes through, I don't know how much people will actually care. Well, and and I think I mean, that's the other thing that comes down to. Beca- a... Because I think the issue is much less of how much they're making off of it, so much as what they have and how they have it. Yeah, I think it's a roundabout way of getting different information is what they're looking for because if if you can determine how much that is, you can determine how much money they have. So, like, there's other variables that mm -hmm. give you information. I mean, if they're making $5 off of me every month, essentially, like, maybe per client that they sell it to or per whatever, um, for my relationship status, my gender, and my general age, I've supplied that information. Mm Mm-hmm. Realistically, I don't care how much they make off of it. 
the more they make, the better. The, like to me, because the service is, is actually pretty decent. But if they're going some backwards way of, okay, I go incognito or something like that, or better yet, I talk, do what I talked about, setting mm-hmm. up a virtual machine and using a completely disassociated computer and disassociated browser, but they still track me because I'm using my IP address, and based on my search patterns, they can identify that I am still this person, essentially. That I have a problem with. Yeah. Because they're trying to go this backwards way when I'm going out of my way to not be tracked. Or I, like even doing something as simple as going into incognito mode on my browser... I'm just trying to do something simple of getting out of the way of any kind of tracking software. There's no guarantee right now that I'm not being tracked because we've had a few issues where incognito mode has been found to be still be tracking users. Yeah, but I I agree with everything you're saying. I still think that this is an important point because, again, like I was talking about earlier, you actually know the value of these things. But, two, it's also the the first step into possibly getting more. Like, if we can actually start pushing on these companies for that kind of information, right. like, it has to start somewhere. And I'm totally okay with this being the jumping off point where eventually we do get the running tally of, like, I want all the data that you have on me. All of it. And you have to legally give that to me without a charge, without yeah. anything else along those lines. As, as opposed to the, co- the companies willingly. Exactly. Quote, unquote. Um, I, giving up the information like Google and mm-hmm. Facebook and Twitter have all done yeah. at this point, And Apple now. I think the point is to get people excited to start asking questions. Yeah. About getting them knowledgeable more than yeah. it is about knowing something. I'm sure they might have an agenda, but it's actually going to help us as well. So hopefully yeah. that's a plus plus. Yeah. I'll be interested to see how this legislature actually forces them to aggregate or spec out the data mm-hmm. like is it on a per field basis or is it going to be based on a per sale of clusters that or, would be interesting yeah like because you have a ton of columns against your individual row as a user profile are certain columns worth more than others or is there a certain grouping of columns that might be worth more that kind of thing like you, how, how is the federal government going to require them to report this you would hope it would be like a utility bill in which it is like hey you have the technology you already have this organized in a specific right. manner like you need to give the breakdown all of it the entire breakdown so that way My you can see was sold 30 times to yep. like sp- yeah, 30 no, different clients no, yeah none of your client data obviously you don't right, need right. Yeah, you but you don't need to identify who you're selling to necessarily. but uh, you know tell me why this much sold like tell me that this much sold to this group for like these fields those kinds of like they have all right. that they have the information so anything less is kind of like it, it's one of those instances where i feel like this is the time for the government actually has the uh, opportunity to push like right. just push push a little bit cuz you can do it Maybe it's a stepping stone going towards the protection, right, where you can start deleting information. Mm-hmm. Because I don't use Facebook anymore. I would love to, for it to be able to delete that information personally and be like, yeah. I don't want that on there. I don't want anything on there. I don't want to see it. I don't want to have anything to do with it. I don't want other people to have it unless they own that property. Whatever. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, Facebook's, Facebook does not release your information for anything. They've, they've, it's not that they've outright said it. It's that they've never said that they won't give you or that, that they will give you the ability to delete all your data. Google's actually outright said that no matter what country you're in, you can remove yourself as a search result and that kind of thing if you really want to. You just have to contact them about it. Yeah. Um, because a lot of people end up with unflattering pictures and things like that that show up online, and you can literally have them remove it. It's a long process, but you can I'm do sure it. for a price, too, you could expedite that process. It, it's funny we talk about search results and all that. There's always a memory I have of a, a friend of ours, uh, Piz Mooney. <laughs> uh, and I was talking to her at one point in time. This was like probably freshman year of college. It was keeping people anonymous. No, you're good. You. It just is really um, weird. Good, I'm lost. <clears throat> yeah. But I remember talking to her, and I, I was bored in class one day, and Google searched her and found an image in a half of a page. Like, found an image of her. And I was like, hey, by the way, this image is of your for this account for this. It was some obscure social media she signed up for years ago, and I was like, I don't know if you know this, but you're findable like real quick. Was it Twinkle Twinkle? No, that'd be really funny. <laughs> um, and and she was blown away. She was like, Oh, I del- I've gotten rid of that. I'd so- like I haven't signed on that in years. I'm like, It's still there. Yep. Like you have to go and ask for it to be removed. Because I was doing the same thing for myself. I was like, I wonder how long it would take to find me. A lot longer. Yeah. There's I not still nearly can. as many Brent Metcalfs out there. There are so many John Pettis, it's not even funny. Oh, I damn, will tell you down. that out of what I've found, there are only two Mark Plovers on the globe. Two wow. more Plovers? Two Mark Plovers. Oh. Me and one other guy who lives in, like, uh, I think he's in UK. Yeah. He's your Irish twin. <laughs> 
I twinsies. <laughs> I technically have an Irish twin. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. Well, my sister's 11 oh. months younger than me. Yeah. There you go. Irish twins. Any more Irish twins? Inter- I because I was interrupting and adding anecdotes. Is there anything else we would like to touch yeah. on this topic? No, I, I, I'm intrigued to see. It. I'm uh, I'm intrigued to see what happens with it first because it's going to have opposition. It's going to have heavy uh-huh. opposition. Uh huh. Um, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. But why would they be so opposed but, to it? Just because of the work itself? Why would you want anybody to know the value that they're getting off of that? Right. Especially if eventually, like, we already have YouTube Premium. Like, we're going to have other services eventually, which will cost money. Because yeah. Because it will. Well, yeah. that, and they're making still making money off of you while you're paying a premium. Correct. That's kind of jacked. That's messed up. Because it, it will ultimately lead to people removing certain types of content if they want to get vendettas, against, for example, against Google or Facebook to say, oh, you make $8 per month off of my relationship status. Removed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. You don't know. Well, they're just going to hold it up and then hold it hostage and I mean, then put a price Facebook, on it. Facebook will and say, this is the last one. This is the date that it was reported, for example. like if, if Especially if their clients start to get weary about it, like people are starting to pull data. When was this last valid? That kind of thing. That, that, that could affect their bottom line. I don't think it will affect their bottom line tremendously. Yeah. But uh, most, it will. Most of these companies have also branched out enough that though they do sell data as their primary income, mm-hmm. they're starting to go into other directions so that way they're able to make income off of other things for this very reason. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's a bubble in and of itself, and much like the real estate bubble we've seen multiple times. Like, there's only so long this industry can kind of stand around, especially in the dark, before people are like, okay, we got to know. We need everything you have. Let's let's figure it out. And then it becomes a little bit more standardized, and then people can't make nearly as much money off of it. Right. So, speaking of companies hiding or trying to defend their practices, Yeah. Talk to us uh, about EA. EA, believe it or not, is doubling down on loot boxes, or should as I call them, surprise mechanics. It's just the most <laughs> bullshit <laughs> response I've ever heard. I died laughing when I heard this. Oh. It's like saying, it's not rape, it's surprise sex. Yeah. <laughs> I was rape is terrible. We're not laughing about rape. Yeah, it's just we're laughing at the comedy of of it all. It's dark humor. It's ludicrousness. So, but that's what the first thing that went into my head. I mean, literally, it's the third thing I wrote on this list. That's when I when I wrote it. I was like, "How are you like okay with this?" Anyway, so I think it's really smart how they're doing this because they're going to make laws against loot boxes, Mm -hmm. but not against surprise Surprise mechanics. mechanics. So therefore, it is a different thing, technically. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna have their lawyers try and get away with it in court. That oh is my for sure. god! They, there's a reason they pay these guys a lot of money. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. Um, I agree that the but the thing is like the argument's still there. Loot boxes for things like baseball cards, Pokemon cards. Those are loot boxes. You don't know what you're getting. It's a surprise pack. Oh, it might be a bunch of crap. Dog. You are guaranteed a certain level of things from a particular type of pack. It, it does get a little interesting because I think the the defense for most of those object has always been you're getting a physical product i agree but at the same time everybody put in their money to get a product of some kind just like we buy video games that are digital i agree you're getting a virtual product i know and that's where it gets a little wonky these days is because we have moved to primarily physically tangible who cares yeah uh, neither are digital video games and no one has a problem with that so i find that to be a little loose of a exchange but to get on point like even kids hatchables you don't know what like they want all these kids like my niece she loves these hatchable things has no idea what's going to be inside them she just wants to open it Mm -hmm. so that's the part of me that's like you're hitting that part of the brain on this kid and it's just pushing this button and i'm like gambling it's like that slot machine (laughs) pretty colors yeah exactly (laughs) um and that's where i kind of like i draw the line where i'm like you're playing on people's psychology Mm -hmm. and being in that field or have been in that field like i understand like what you're doing and i'm not dumb and neither are a lot of other people right which is why like the surprise mechanic things just kind of pisses me off it's It's, cool it's it's cool you want to defend your position oh yeah and i'll get to why they're defending this position here very soon. Expected for sure. Oh yeah, um, the part of the that made me feel the weirdest was when they started talking about ethical. No, it's ethical. It's like, oh, now we're getting Ooh. serious. We're getting into <laughs> lawyer terms. It just sounded dirty the uh-huh. way that they put it. I mean, ethical and quite fun, quite enjoyable to people. It's gambling. like a of robot. It, is. it sounded like a robot it's, saying it's a this. Distant stuff. form of gambling. Ooh. Technically, if you go to Chuck E. Cheese, it's a distant form of gambling. Yeah, yeah, it's enjoyable too, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the 
ton of money you're dumping into uh -huh. like a but short good What's short the difference between that and the claw machine though? I mean for oh real. I, I think the big difference is that you physically have to go and get a currency, put it in there. It's easier to manage and watch that currency. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I agree with that. And there is a psychological Which, effect of like this is here and now. This is what I have tangibly whereas before just swiping a card or hitting a button to just keep going. Yeah. So yeah, there's no there's nothing there's no blockages there. And, you know, again, the but parents controlling the, the cards is super important for this fact. That was going to be my point. But I'm talking about the people with gambling the addictions. Yeah. People who had already have gambling addictive behavior are the ones that are at risk here. Yeah. And they're the ones that I'm afraid for because there are people who are honest and trying to beat this addiction. They don't go to Vegas anymore. They don't do these things. And then they're playing a game and they are actually put at risk. Uh, I do find that that is a little, like, it's sad. But I mean, you. I mean, there's bars everywhere for alcoholics too. Well, but here's the big thing: is that you when you, <laughs> when you walk past a bar, like they have signs, like you have to be 21 to drink. Like mm -hmm. you know these things here. The bigger issue with a lot of games but right I'm now. I'm talking about just for the addictive behavior, just like for the alcoholics. Yeah, but there's the, nothing to help them. Well, but there's plenty well, of people who buy games that don't know have loot boxes, and then are in the middle of the game, and then they're trapped in it, or because they have that addictive yeah. behavior. Like without a warning system of sorts to be like, hey, by the way. This does have these mechanics, yeah. So you should avoid that if that's what you're you're privy to. If like that's what's going to mess you up. Yeah, I d I don't want to restrict things because I'm not a I'm a fan of of free market. Yeah, don't yeah. get me wrong. This is, but I am still conscious of the fact of what the effects are going to be. So let's not confuse the agenda. We know what you're doing, and I'll get to why right. there's doubling down. They're drawing the line oh, in the yeah. sand. Well, right now they're go ahead. I was just gonna say that's why I'm saying not limit. Just advertise. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, hey, we're not stupid. This is what's going on. This is the type of stuff that you like. This is what we're doing. I mean, the limiting uh, factor would be your, like, for from a children's perspective, the parents having to be correct. responsible for yeah. this. But unfortunately, a lot of parents like to play ignorant for this and, and just don't want to be involved. I had stuff. no idea if he put a card on there, he'd spend money. And then he'd, he'd just keep hitting go, 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 go. <laughs> put a password on yeah. it. Yeah. Use the card once. Don't save the data. Better like, yet, come on. every online store has a currency you could go to the store and buy. And yeah. There you go. No credit cards involved. You Here's your PSN card. That is all you get. Yep. You get $20. Who was it that was stopping? The GameStop was stopping. Yeah. Them. Yeah. But you can still get them on Amazon. You can buy oh. them online oh, yeah. and literally oh, give yeah, yourself yeah. a code. Like, there are means to fix this. Yeah. <laughs> the really drawing the line in the sand about the gambling and leading to gambling behavior behaviors and issues. Yeah. They're like, no, this does not cause this. This is surprise mechanics. This is like not the <laughs> same thing. And the way that they're worded, I'm like, so you guys are joking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. That's, uh, so, I mean, why? Probably possible lawsuits. If people are bl oh, I'm blaming you for my addictive behavior, I got addicted to video games because of these loot boxes, yeah. stuff like that. And they're like, I we don't want this. But here's the kicker: in uh, 2019, uh, 20 percent of all EA revenue came from selling team packs in FIFA alone mm -hmm. last year. 20 percent of the revenue came from loot boxes last year from one I game. It. FIFA's got a bigger 850 pounds, million pounds. That is a lot of money. Yeah. I believe it because FIFA actually has a bigger marketplace or a bigger market than you yeah, might Yeah, but we're not talking game. about any of the other sports games either. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it or, can, or Star Wars or Apex oh, Legends. Like man. all oh, these yeah, games Apex Legends, that they have yeah. available to Which them. is all, I'm like a that second on the revenue list right now. That, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh I forgot, what's that franchise? What? Can you talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think right now they're trying to bury some things, including Anthem right now, which I just saw some footage of... The Cataclysm event, which not too bad, but at the same time, boring. It's one and done kind of thing. Bye bye, Anthem. Uh, so, uh, as a matter of fact, because of Anthem, execs are not taking bonuses. Uh, they had such a, they didn't make marks. So yeah. they're and they're. This also shows that they are completely money driven. So they're doubling down on loot boxes. They're not taking their bonus because they lost too much money, but they're doubling down on these things because that's what's making them money. Yeah, in other. And other games that continue to uh, that, that continue to just make money literally off of just yeah that. like I mean probably I'm a good chunk of the reason why Rocket League is still a big thing. Yeah, I believe you I, solely. I, I have <laughs> no, I mean I've dumped hundreds of dollars into it at this point just Ooh, from like man. just from buying keys to open crates. Yeah, and, and skins and packs and all kinds of other stuff just because I enjoy playing the game. Quick. Yeah. Utter tangent. You excited about the new DLC coming this summer? Yes. 
Yes. hundred <laughs> percent. I'm super excited. It's all like 80s themed TV yeah. shows and movies and stuff. It oh, looks yeah, really like cool. The, like the old school Go- Ghostbusters car. Like they brought in a Ghostbusters themed game. Yeah. Dukes yeah. of Hazard, I'm sure, is in there. Oh, yeah. There's, yeah, actually, there's, the, there's the, some the, cool stuff. Yep. I'm, I'm super excited. Tangent over. Yep. Um, I wonder if it's going to have the Confederate flag on it. Uh, I think, I think so. it's really interesting that they didn't advertise that fact a whole lot, that the executives gave up. I want to know what executive actually gave up these bonuses. Well, there is actually... We're thinking that like some other higher-up was uh, going to say, you're, you're giving not, up. <laughs> you're not getting this. Well, no, I mean, there's actually clear rules. There's actually an SEC form that I looked at, which okay. is why we know that they didn't take bonus. So it oh. actually names the people what their bonuses are, what their, uh, their uh, annual salary is, a bunch of stuff. Really? So yeah, this very was interesting. In court? It, uh, a court document? SEC, it's an SEC document. But I wasn't sure why it was released. Like, was it released It's released annually. Oh, there's a lot of companies So it's just these. out there. I yeah. got you. If, and people are able to pull that information. Maybe for publicly traded companies. Yes, that would it make is. Sense. It's, okay. it's for transparency. Okay. Um, well, well, and also, it states on their... Necessarily be public, but. Yeah. It also states on their rules of engagement of how and why they earn certain bonuses and why they do or do not. Like certain marks that they have to hit. Yes. To, okay, and okay. It's, it's to appease shareholders who are buying Did into a company with it. <laughs> yes, that I like this. so bad. For those of you who can't see, he punched me. <laughs> oh. But, um, Hard, I might have. Right it, it's face. just re- like... I'm okay with the fact that you're like completely like, uh, no, we're okay with loot boxes. This is what we want to do. We're making money. Yeah. But to call it a surprise mechanic yeah. and then try to negate responsibility completely for behavioral stuff of human beings that which you were trying to take advantage of yeah. is just gross. There, there's like. <laughs> and then to show that like literally everything that they're doing involving these loot boxes is directly linked to why they are doing what they're doing. There's a way and they're completely money driven is gross. It's, there's a, just a way to do this properly, like yeah. you said. Like there is a way to come out and go. Yes, we understand there are some concerns about loot boxes. We individually, uh, outside the ESRB, will start labeling our boxes with loot box, like everything that has a loot box on yep. it. We will take uh, a hold of that. We also will have on our website steps that parents can go through to limit the consumption of their children. And there will be a form that you have to agree to for using this game that we are not responsible like, for your uh, addictive so, behavior. Like, I the old method where it was like it, it would ask you if you were 18 or older and it would require you to enter a card, a credit card information, uh, like your credit card yeah. information. To validate that you are eighteen plus. Yeah. Now, granted, you can get an a, a credit card when Around you're younger that, than that, yeah. but by that time you should be. It's old no different to than understand a, how your bank account works. It's like, no different than a rated R movie being watched by a twelve year old. Yeah. Well, I think the bigger thing here at home because it's on DVD. I, but I, I all, think, all of the all of their the things they can put into place would be behind that unless you're like, hey, put in your driver's license number. Yeah. Um, like it's always going to be that false sense of security because there's ways around it. But the whole point is covering your ass as a company while also taking at least the minorest, like the smallest step to protect your consumers. The thing is, they've obviously shown they don't care about their consumers yeah. except for the ones that are paying. I, I mean, so, so like the like the from a, a legal perspective, yeah. There's already been regulations put in place for cigarettes, alcohol, and other uh, addictive substances anyway to have warning labels on there yeah. regarding that fact. Yeah. For example, when I was on uh, my cruise in the Bahamas, or uh, down in the, the, the Caribbean islands, um, there was a store we went into, and all of the cigarette packages had to have a massive white label on the front that literally got rid of the if, yeah. branding that was on it, mm-hmm. and it literally in giant black bold text says, smoking kills. Yep. Yeah. And that had to be on the front of it, and that's a, that's a requirement of that country to be able to sell those cigarettes there. No, and I would have ripped that label off and smoked the shit out of it because I was on vacation. But, <laughs> but the point is to be able to put those labels on certain things or to be able to put digital restrictions on things. And uh, we could put the regulations in place to make uh-huh. that happen. Oh, you go over to Europe. They got, like, decaying mouths all over the fact and, like, blisters and people with, like, whole chunks right, right, right. out of their body. Uh, but, but that's what I mean. Now, granted, this isn't a physical product that people sell, but the difference is you can put things in place that require people to enter in their information. You know, I mean, it... Do we we just talked about giving information I mean, we don't want, right? Well, but that's the thing. So, like, real ID is becoming a thing anyway from driver's yeah. licenses and everything like that, and that's going to become the new national standard. It's intended to be the replacement for Social Security numbers. That would be good. That would so be great. the idea is you can enter in your real ID number, and it can validate your age. Yeah. Now, granted, there's not much to stop your kid from going in your wallet and, and, and grabbing your real ID number and entering it it's, for them, but the difference is 
you can physically lock that stuff up and just keep it away from them. Well, that, yeah. that's not hard. It's the same with parents having credit cards. Like, if there, again, there is a yeah. false sense of security here because the loopholes to get around it aren't very big. It doesn't take a genius to do it. Nope, but again, I did it. But, it. but it should put the accountability on the, the people, the not owner. The, exactly, the person purchasing the product, right. not the company. I mean, you don't blame the bank because you got your card and information stolen because you left your card at a Correct. bar. I just want to put this out there: we blame guns for killing people. We're still debating that. I, I would also argue that's a very nuanced no, conversation. That's it's a little bit it's different. A, it, I'm so, I, I agree with that, but at the same time, like we're, we always like to but blame it, it everything to else. The argument, though, I mean, it, it, to we like extent. to blame everything else for our shortcomings. Right. Instead of being responsible human beings, we like to blame everyone else. But here is the problem right now: is that we have a company that, rather than taking in at least some of the onus because they developed these things, mm-hmm. they're just. Offsetting all of it for the cheery version of life, however oh, they see it. it's not that bad. Yeah. yeah. It's fine. Everything's great. But last it's I like, checked, so did the cigarette companies before they were hardcore well, banned, before Joe Camel got removed. And here they are. All of them were treated as villains. Like, right. Like, that's where it comes And they down. still are, which is why smoking's at the lowest rate it's ever been, since smoking was pretty much invented. No. Or, or since cigarettes were invented, anyway. Probably due to the fact that so many of them are dying of cancer is also helping. Well, there's also that. But our generation was raised a lot with the anti-smoking ads, mm-hmm. the removal of cartoon characters. Cartoon ads. characters. It was Joe true. Camel, like, and that's the, this is the one I keep going back to is Joe Camel because that was the most successful cigarette advertising campaign ever. Oh yeah. oh yeah. But legally, they were forced to remove it. We were also okay before they started using a bunch of pesticides and glue in our cigarettes. Oh, they've always used them. Where do no, they not the glue. go? The smoke rings I blow each night. Sorry. Anyway. Anyways. You happy? I love that movie. Thank you for smoking. <laughs> if you've never seen it, you should totally it. It is a watch great it. movie. It's so good. Um, it, it is Kevin a very... Spacey's in that movie. I forgot about that. No, he's not. Yeah, he is. No. Yeah. Who do you think is the one that kidnaps him in the van? That's not Kevin Spacey. Pizza Spoiler bed? alert. No. That's what I thought. <laughs> I, uh, I think it's a very interesting <laughs> situation here. I think that EA is going about this all wrong. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I definitely think that there's a better way to do it. We've described it fairly in detail. Yep. Learn the uh, lessons of the cigarette industry. You will become the bad guy. Correct. Yep. Correct. It's not going to look good. And the wording you're using is just gross. Oh, my God. So bad. So, like, I just keep thinking of, like, your analogy, but also, like, a drive-by shooting. Surprise bullets. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just. Or in my case, surprise eggs. Yeah. Or, or Sorry, like, we're not, it's not battery. It's just surprise fighting. Yeah. Just all of it, just terrible, absolutely terrible. But let us, yeah, let us know in the description below what you think about surprise surprise loot box, (laughs) surprise mechanic, and surprise sex. God, just no, (laughs) don't let us know about that. You can keep that one yourself. Uh, speaking of uh, controversy, Actually, go to your local police department and let them know. <laughs> let them know exactly how you feel about it. There you go. Uh, speaking of controversy in the video game industry, we're going to talk about Square Enix, Tifa, and breast size. Are you excited? Yes, actually, because Tifa's hot. So, yeah, I mean, you had me excited with the last bit, I guess. But. In the original Final Fantasy VII, Tifa has some fairly large breasts. We have talked about this before when we oh, wait, described. Yeah, no, you, you, yeah, correct. Okay. Well, they uh, look like balloons before. We've, they we've look gone over this at work. I might add. Correct. <laughs> Cartoon balloons is what they look like. So, uh, at E3, they did a reveal trailer of Tifa's character model here in Final Fantasy VII. Uh, it appeared to many that her breast size had been reduced. Um, they did that with uh, Tomb Raider, too. Following that nice reveal, there were plenty of articles online both defending and against Madonna. this. Uh, and this has been an interesting controversy because this falls in the line of I really love people who don't think before they talk. Mm. Uh, so there are plenty of, of Twitter accounts who are like, I refuse to play Final Fantasy VII Remake or uh, Mortal Kombat 11 was another one in which they were like, the breast size is reduced. I won't play a censored game. It's like, that's that's, not that's s- the censored. Correct. The, the, the censored company, part is they wear clothes. The company decided that been... they were going to make them smaller on their own. That's not censorship. What? Okay. Despite the, the fact. Different artists may design it slightly different. What, so These are the same guys that also marry pillows. So it, ca- it comes down to a couple of things. One, uh, the Tetsuya Nomura came out and talked in a Famitsu article about how her build was more athletic, how mm-hmm. she's going to have abs. She's going to wear, she's wearing a sports bra. That is what she's wearing. It's a very high end frou-frou sports bra, apparently, but it is a sports bra nonetheless, which 
sucks in. Uh, but however, the article got mistranslated. And so oh, no. he was also talking about how Square Enix has an ethics board internally. So they have their own ethics committee that goes and checks out all their games. And it, the mistranslation stated that the ethics board said that they needed to reduce her breasts. So the internet exploded over this ethics board. And why do they have this ex- the ethics board? Why they can't they make games the way they want to? All this other stuff. Was it one mistranslation? or did Correct. One mistranslation that spread like wildfire. Oh, man. Because Famitsu is a Japanese-centric uh, organization. They're very well known. It's probably the most popular Japanese uh, video game website slash magazine. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So a correct translation finally has gone around and what it is is the athletics board actually said what they wanted to make sure, a- athletics the ethics <laughs> board <laughs> wanted to make sure that while Tifa is doing all these acrobatics she has to look realistic mm-hmm. so there can't That's be fair. anything unrealistic in her chest area as like, she's maneuvering around or it's going to be like dead, dead or alive five yeah. <laughs> I'll say there are not that many hyper athletic females that have, have Ginormously large breasts. Correct. Or they can't like be in two different positions at once while she's doing a backflip. Like this. Oh, that would happen I mean, too. I mean, that's you, realistic. You, <laughs> about to say you have a physics engine that's going to treat them equally. I'm sure. But she has a sports bra on to keep everything together. Yeah. And so it has just been really interesting to watch the turmoil over this and how there are lots of video game sites now that have female writers who are coming in writing articles of like, hey. I wear a sports bra, and this is how these work. And then other people coming on line, including, I hate, I, this, this one really broke my heart, Colin Moriarty, talking about how terrible these articles are written, that it's just placating, or it's uh, playing on a controversy that doesn't make sense, and that all these media are dying. Gotten into a fight with Brian Altano on Twitter. Really? Oh, yeah. Like, back and forth, really terribly. It, it went down into, like, how the sites run and whether they're dying or not. That's a whole other story in and of itself. But So that's that what they were arguing about or about the breast size? It started about the, the article involving breast size. Okay, yeah. so he, there, he was complaining more about the article the itself. The writing of it itself, okay. yeah. But it has it has drawn up that level of controversy where people are going back and forth. Your internet warriors are yeah, full all over full the place. Out of readiness, like, come on. And it's exhausting. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I, that doesn't even seem like a battle. I, I would have been like, nope. <laughs> but I want to talk about this one to properly inform individuals of like, hey, guess what? There is a proper tra- uh, translation out there if you are at all interested in this or have a stake because you want to or talk. You're apparently just interested in breasts because apparently a ton of people are. Yes. <laughs> I have to say that like uh, it, I never saw anybody freak out. I know there was people that talked about it. Yeah. But like the Tomb Raider thing, like her body was obviously, you know. Angelina Jolie style, body style, big Originally, breast, big yes. booty. And then it went down to more of like, I don't know, what's her name from Last of Us? No, it's not that small. No, I mean, not, not that small, but it's like athletic. proportional. It was, yeah, it was an athletic, slim build right. is what she would, they were going for. And th- this is multiple reasons. I think we've talked about it before. Like, one, as an industry, technology is progressing enough that we can actually build interesting looking characters that don't, that can also be sexy, because yep. let's be honest, Almost every video game character that's a main character looks sexy to some degree. Like right. Joel, rugged, sexy old Texan man. Oh, yeah, um, man. Yeah, like, uh, uh, that's what I used to think. Um, League of Legends. Yeah. Tons like, of League of Legends characters like Katarina or um, uh, uh, Darius. Like if you want to go from a male perspective, that kind of thing. Yeah. Like they're all big buff dudes. Yeah. Or they're all like really skinny, attractive females with giant breasts. Dude, it's Joel like, is on. like Clooney and Pitt. Mashed into one kind of face. Um, but it, it seems like Man from a technological standpoint, we want things to be a little bit more realistic. So even though that you can make these obnoxious pr- proportions, people are just moving away from that because it's just easier to believe and in it these characters. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Well, like having a big boob yeah. chick doing flips everywhere and then like doing all this stuff. I'm like, no, I would imagine someone doing this would be a lot similar, like a rock climbing build. Correct. Like you're not going to see someone with massive, They, they it's going to be too hard for them. It's yeah. going to suck. And they're going to have to like hurt themselves trying Make to do it. Make it realistic. They're just going to fall off and die. Like, come yeah. On. <laughs> also, we're seeing the industry is now. You can diving. choose this expert level. <laughs> Big boobs. <laughs> Actually, it won't be expert. It'll be triple expert. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the the industry is also uh, changing. We're getting a, bu- a lot more females involved in actual video game development. So I think that's a factor as well. Yeah. A- and quite in re- in reasonability though, not necessarily yeah. censorship. It's, it's not like a like oh the women are coming and taking everything away it's like no it's like when you're in a creative process you are involving everybody in the creative process yeah Yeah. so it comes down to like oh well here's the design i came up with mixed between the two because that's how it always works to be honest if you have women that come in and say that's not realistic 
Yeah, you're, yeah, you're 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 correct. That's good not point. realistic. We well, were just so taking we're this and taking a copy and paste and just making it what it was. And they're like, "Well, why don't we do it this way?" It's like, okay, like, cool. Do you, does everybody know why Tomb Raider's breasts are so big? Like Laura Croft originally, it was a math error. Oh, yeah. They were doing the model and the math. They they meant to lower the number and and, and the equation they used actually increased it to the size that they released with. And they're like. How did they not notice this before? No, no, they knew it. Like it was in the modeling. Like the error happened, and then they rendered the model, and they're like, "Oh, well, that's wrong." And one of the execs was like, "It'll sell," and that's how they came up. He's like, "Not wrong." No, <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, pretty sure every other dude in the room is like, yeah. "Ooh, well, dang!" And, and I think that speaks to like I get the look of that butt running all day. I don't, yeah. I don't think it's a secret if you look at advertising for video games in the '90s. It was aimed at pu- prepubescent teenage boys. I mean, like, look at uh, Super Nintendo. I mean, even Mortal Kombat. Yeah. I mean, they were all like thin, lacely drawn, big yeah. boob chicks. I mean, that was also much more of a time when video games were di- specifically directed Correct. at boys. Yeah, yeah. So. Perfect Dark. The, the models on the front box of that one. And we've grown away from that. So obviously, no, we have not. Not all of them. <laughs> but, I, but I mean, like, oh yeah, fine. Historically, video games have been directed at boys, and and. But I, that has a lot shifted since then. I yeah. was just talking about the big boobs and girls. Honestly. Yeah, there, you'll still <laughs> well, yeah, find but, quite a few of them. Just like you'll s- find the chiseled, yeah, you know, exactly. Greek Roman <laughs> god men who have like twelve packs. You're like, it's not even real. No, like uh, honestly, for instance, I really enjoyed her body style. I was like, man, that oh, is, yeah, that is like proportionally sexy to me. What's her name? I enjoyed that. Oh, now you said it, Alexandra. Uh, and... I was, uh, Alexandra is what I was thinking, but it's not right. No, that's the male name. Alexandria is the male name. Yeah. It's, uh, Cassandra. Cassandra, thank there you. Go. Yes, no, I agree. And we're seeing, again, you're seeing a realism that works because of technology and people involved in it. Well, so part of it for me, too, is that as our technology and as our rendering gets better and as our graphical fidelity gets better, you almost need to go much with much more of a realism because that unrealistic... Yeah. It's going to stick out. anyway, will stick out way too hard. Now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, it, it's just going to be ridiculous to see somebody, like, with, it, using this specific example, large breasts, but on a realistic body size, and it's just not going to look now. Yeah, I agree. Can you I imagine agree. the chick Matsumune from Bleach? Oh, the, <laughs> oh yeah. my God, that would be ridiculous. I, I also think it's interesting, too, because um, I am all understanding of wanting to maintain, like, the the actual characterization and, and what the original game was, but Tifa's breasts have nothing to do with her characterization no. in the game. Like her, Honestly, the way the character reacts, the way that exactly. your interaction with the character works, like the rest of that is going to matter tremendously more because it's going to feel more natural. Yep. One specific bodily feature about somebody should not make or break the game. I, I like them the when character. they're natural. Who doesn't? Uh, I, in our little description, you'll probably find tons of articles. I actually put down there quite a few uh, because there's different sides, including the Twitter fights, uh, some articles that actually explain how bra and breast size work, which I thought was fascinating in and of itself. So please feel free to read those. And in the description, tell us what you think about this entire situation. Do you disagree? I would love to hear a compelling argument as to why you think we are wrong. And now that we have, hold on. <laughs> I was waiting for it. I was going to finish it now. Oh, finish it all the way. <laughs> now that we've poured our drinks, I believe it is now time for Last Call. Last, Last Call! Call! You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. In case you were wondering what we were drinking, uh, our special guest of the week has been brought to us by Handsome John himself. What do we Ooh. have? Oh, this is uh, Jameson Black Barrel. It's one of my all-time favorites. It's, uh, it's oaky. It's got a good flavor, and it is clean mm. in taste. It I doesn't usually drink whiskey neat. So <laughs> I just like, a full nose of it and it just went Ooh. Right It's oh, um gosh. it's actually really good for making old fashions. Uh, mm-hmm. actually I think earlier in one of the other episodes I used this to make an old fashioned and uh, it's actually my go to. I can't go back to Jameson anymore. It's just too plain. Yeah. This has got a lot of really but interesting notes to it. It's got a bolder flavor. It's got more of a almost it, like a it's close to a scotch where it's got a little bit more of a smoky flavor. Yeah. Not so much peat, but that smoke. Yeah. Uh, whereas Jameson is very, very clean. It's yeah, very... It's a, this has a clean finish, don't get me wrong. It's still got that warming sensation yeah. without the scotch, like, peat moss tone. But Jameson also has, like, traditional Jameson has, like, a sweeter vanilla. Yeah, on the you definitely end. taste a lot yeah. more of the vanilla than that I one. I think we need to see a research. Now that we've step back into whiskey, I feel like we need to step back into uh, the Glen Levitt 15 year uh, I'm, single malt. Bring it I'm on, okay bro. Everyone. I'm actually thinking about one day, and you'll see it on this show. You're going to get that red breast? You better, believe it. You better <laughs> believe we get the red breast. Yeah, it is very good. Tasty, Matter of fact, at, uh, over at the University ABC store, 
there is red breast. We can talk more off the air. Indeed. I'm with you 100% though. Yeah. Um, moving on to other th- topics uh, that we have here. Uh, we have uh, ideas coming for more content, uh, not just on the channel, uh, Strange Gaming as a whole, but here as the show. We've talked about it before and honestly need a little bit of input as to how we are going to do it. Absolutely. Because quite frankly, we will do it the easiest way possible for us if you don't tell us otherwise. Yep. Uh, we would like to do an episode a month in which we are playing a game together on a couch in front of monitors, however that may be. Tons of party games. Oh, yeah. Enjoying some drinks and just kind of hanging out it'd be the similar probably each other off you know probably (laughs) roughly a 30 minute episode (laughs) however we need to know do you want us to replace a current episode where we would do three of these style and then a game episode a month or add it to the show so please let us know in the the comments you don't want us to skip a week of news above john hello Um, also, let us know what you think the first game should be, if you have any interest whatsoever. Oh, we already got that picked oh. out. I know we tons do, but we need feedback Move or die, as well. Stick fight. There's a ton of stuff. Oh yeah, definitely give us ideas because I mean, yeah, it might I mean, be better than stick fight. If you have something that, that that's like out of the ordinary, let us know. Yeah, uh, we have quite a few streamers on the Strange Gaming Network. Of course, you are well aware of this, but we are highlighting one new streamer, Resilience. R e s i one i e n c e. The link for his Twitch channel is below in the description as well. Uh, he has been streaming quite a bit of Realm Royale, so if you have any interest, please go check him out. Throw him a sub. We would love that. And we have more streamers coming, including one fairly well-known from Software Streamer who may be joining our network. Yeah. More on that in the future. Now it's time for the final part of the show, which is the question of the week. If you could be a cartoon character for a week, who would it be and why? And I will open this with we can do anime, too, if you'd like. Oh, yeah? I'll leave it on the table. Oh, snap. If you want to do two separate ones? I actually did two separate ones because I didn't know if anime I, was in it. Yeah, this is a good one. Yeah. I didn't think about this question so, at all, even though I picked it. Actually, we, we discussed. We both had the same exact thing picked out. Yeah. One, the show is Ed, Ed, and Eddie all over the place. Okay. So like oh, it, it's no, great. It <laughs> so like uh, no, I, so I said uh, like he he asked me straight up. I was like, oh, a hundred percent, I'm double D. Like <laughs> it, it, out of any Cartoon Network character, period. Yeah, yeah I'm double D. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Then I was like, so who's who's Ed? And he's. I'm Ed. <laughs> it's fine by me. <laughs> I am technically the shorter of the of the group, but, but I'll take it. You are the personality, so Eddie makes sense. <laughs> but That's I do funny. also run through fences, so. Yeah, there you go. But uh, I, I like thought that. I'd get that out of the way. I thought that was, that that was, was a good really one. fun. That's a real good one. Um, do you have another one? Is that, is that the only No, no, no. no. I, I was just wanted to state that out front. Okay, yeah. You want me to go again? Yeah, please do. Yeah. Uh, my next one, I was really, I was really torn because I was like, do I want to... Do my anime one first? Yes. You know what? I'm going to do my anime one. I want to be One Punch Man. Saitama, really? Yes. I would love to be Saitama. I love the fact that he is just like very much like me. Like, I really don't care, but you yet have somehow have abilities to do things. And yeah. I'm just like, no, I just want to help people and do stuff. Like, that's great to me. I enjoy that. And then having the world where like he could like punch a mountain away just would feel so good. Interesting. It'd be awesome. It'd be a good time. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Is there stuff that's more important than this podcast? It's literally about to be over as no, soon as you I'm, answer these I'm stupid questions. Literally trying to find the anime person. I don't think. Okay. All right. Well. Oh, he's gonna do an anime one too. Uh, huh? So I was thinking about this long and hard, and I think anime is super easy for me. Yeah. Surprisingly enough, Luffy from One One Piece. Really. I love the world of One Piece. Uh, I really enjoy the lore, like the ability to, for, for A, having a rubber body. At first, it seemed like, well, what am I going to do with a rubber body? But the way it's utilized uh, for both traversal and combat mm-hmm. sounds fascinating. Um, yeah, I would love to be able to, I mean, it's kind of Spider-Man-esque where I'm just like, shoo, whoo, and then just zoop over a building. Like, yeah, that sounds great. That's amazing. He's uh, very laid back. He has a pirate crew of colorful characters. Like, you drink rum and eat meat. Like, yeah. It sounds great. Sounds like an awesome life. Um, and then when it came to my cartoon character, since he's still looking over there, this was a tougher one for me. So did, where, did, where did you get your inspiration from? I, I took a lot of mine from Cartoon Network. So I, I very much lie in Cartoon Network, mostly because a lot of the cartoons I watch that are not Involve Cartoon Network. Now, of course, I saw Rock was Modern Life and the Wild Thorn yeah. Race, but uh, none of them really like appeal. That was Nintendo to me. Yeah, or like, Nintendo, Nickelodeon. I mean, <laughs> they are the Nintendo of Cartoon Network. They really are. Um, I really kind of find a weird space here because I can't pick between number one from Kid Next Door or um, uh, what's his name? Yang from Avatar, Last Airbender. Ooh, like, both of those choice. are yeah, like, because... Yeah, yeah. 
being Aang from Avatar would be amazing because you have the power to control wind, like yeah. glider, flying, get a flying buffalo. Like, that sounds amazing. Right. But I feel like it's a little too anime inspired. So I'll do number one from Kids Next Door. Okay. Okay. I like okay. that. So, Cards Network, stick with Double D, 100%. Yep. Um, definitely from my kid era, that kind of thing. That was one of my favorite characters. Yeah. Um, from the anime realm, as few as I have seen, <clears throat> I would prefer to be Bit Cloud. Okay. From Zoids. Okay. 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 So like Zoids was my shit. Dude, <laughs> I love me some Zoids. I would go home and like the Liger Zero with all of the attachments oh. and the different types of like the uh, Liger Zero. Oh gosh. Oh, just so just good. Just like the different types of like things they would encounter, but the different types of armor or attachments it would have onto it anyway would just it, it just blew my mind. Well, that like, they were the functional. That I, I oh. rented the Zoids game when it came out. Nice from Blockbuster. As yeah, yeah. Dating myself here. A no little kidding, bit. right? Blockbuster is that thing that Captain Marvel falls into in the movie. You've probably never seen it before. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, but I enjoyed that so much. Like I would race home that kind of thing. Like after the bus would drop me off because like it would start at like right around like five or five thirty or whatever time. Yeah. Like, yeah. like as soon as I would come home or whatever, it would show up on television. That's amazing. Oh god, I, I enjoyed it so much. That's but awesome. Big Cloud was always like the guy I wanted to be, like in the Zoid, controlling the Zoid, like in it was an AI personality that you developed a relationship with. I yeah. thought it was so cool. That's really cool. I like that a lot. To go on a little bit more of a darker tone, and I oh. don't know why I went there today. Interesting. But I wanted to be Samurai Jack. Ooh, no, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Well, I mean, to think about his life is kind of dark. I it's agree, like, 100%. It's completely self-serving, but like I've always enjoyed the Japanese culture and his mindset mm -hmm. and like his skill and being able to overcome the things that he does in that show is amazing. Uh, one of my favorite ones was the uh, fight between the light and dark ninja. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, my yeah, God, yeah. it was so well done. Um, Any episode with him and the Viking, I'm I'm on board. <laughs> I, lo I love that Scottish Viking man. I uh, but yeah, I just I really had an affinity for him and um, kind of what he stood for. Mm -hmm. It was actually kind of like something that actually stood out to me as uh, I was growing up. You're gonna make me go. I almost, I almost went to Goku and I was like, you know what, Goku is just yeah. too easy. Yeah. And DBZ you know what? To be easy. honest, I, I don't know who would win a fight between One Punch Man and Goku. Saitama. I really want now to go by. Samurai Jack. <laughs> <laughs> so Big Cloud was the first one I was, th or was the second one I came up. Uh, I remembered anyway. The first one I was thinking of, I, I can't think of his name from uh, Full Metal Alchemist. Oh, uh, that was Al? the, that was the first. Ed or Al? Ed's Probably. the boy. Al's the one in the suit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's Ed then. Yeah. Um, okay. That was the first real anime that I watched. That I was like, that was oh, a good one man. to start and, out with. And, you know, like grows, yeah, just grows into this like massive like. Uh, basically, a giant uh, mech. It's a like, giant, yeah. Uh, like, and I just lost my mind whenever I saw it. It was oh, great. Oh man! If you have not watched either Full Metal Alchemist or Brotherhood, you or, should Zoids. Watch both. Zoids. or Zoids, Zoids. I or Zoids. Zoids. Zoids, yeah, I'll recommend uh, it. I, I'm going to end on this one, which is, I would have also picked Fred from Scooby Doo because you know he's with oh, both Daphne? Valma and Daphne. Man, he <laughs> you know he's up hitting them both. both. You know he's with both. No way. But let us know what cartoon Dude, character Shaggy you would be. Dude, Shaggy was definitely He's like, hey, hey, Scooby, why don't you go with Fred? Yeah. Shaggy it happened a like, couple of times. It wasn't me. Uh, <laughs> let us know in the comments above, Mark. Again, it's like Whoa. a rotating clock. It's always weird. Uh, and also, please, once again, in the comments, let us know what games you like to, uh, you would like for us to play, how you want us to set up that game night episode per month, uh, and any other topics you think that we should talk about. The I want to hear about EA. I want to hear what people think about EA. I, I, wanna, I really want to hear that. Yeah. Yep. But there's a lot to talk about there. There's a reading list in the description. Please feel free to interact with us on Twitter. We will have links in the description that lead you directly to us. It'll be super fun. But until Maybe. next week, cheers. 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 That was actually that was acoustically awesome. brilliant. I agree with that entirely. I definitely see a lot of him. Uh, I could easily see myself writing a rock opera musical to Dracula. <laughs> yes. Die. 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 I can't. <laughs> <laughs>